Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. Got another update video for you. Been uh, pretty busy out here in the shop last couple weeks. Well, I say that. I actually haven't. I haven't spent as much time out here as I probably should have or kind of want to, but you know, you come in here when you when you feel like it. If you don't really feel like it, then there's really no point of coming out of here. I do hope to get this thing done by the middle of June. Uh, it's there's a big Jeep rally up near the Loretta Lynn Ranch that I uh, that I would really like to go to just to kind of show off a little bit and see what this thing does. They're going to have uh, off-road trails and all kinds of stuff, but it'd just be neat to get that done. But, you know, here we are. We just started April and, uh, you know, time crunch is, is coming. That's a month and a half, so no, it's not. That's two and a half months. That makes it sound better. Anywho. If it gets done by then, it gets done by then. If it doesn't, you know, there you go. It will get done. So, last couple of weeks, I have been working on, um, let's show you. Of course, I've been working on getting this front fog light mounted. Huh? How about that? Yeah. I think that's just a simple bracket. Two simple brackets, but boy, let me tell you. That takes, no, of course, that's ridiculous. I did do that, but... I mostly did this. This is kind of cool. I just put this in uh, for the first time and hopefully the second to last time. I don't want to ever have to do this again. I weighed this thing. It's 534 pounds. So, yikes. About 400 and something pounds worth of batteries and, you know, maybe 80 pounds worth of cage to uh, to hold it all in there. But, you know, there it is. Uh, the motor, engine, transmission, or the, sorry, the engine, transmission, transfer case, they all weighed 660, I think, so, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be over the standard weight of this thing by, you know, quite a bit, but, you know, that's okay, uh, it'll help, uh, get the power down to the ground, won't help very much on efficiency in those watt hours per mile, but, oh well, okay, so, um, how did I do this? First of all, how did I get that in there being 500 pounds? Let me show you what I came up with. Of course, using the cherry picker in kind of the same way that I uh, picked the um, drive unit up. I made a little bracket, a little mount, so those three, those three holes, they bolt into the middle three holes on the, uh, the battery box. And then, uh, just put a little pin pin through the middle with a clip it is just something to hold on to and then uh, these little these little standoffs they're just uh, all thread extenders uh, that I didn't really have to but I did anyway because I've got a lathe and I haven't had a chance to use it so I did dang it so I milled those down a little bit so that they'd fit in the in the holes better and then you just take a bolt through the top through here into here and then Lift it up. I was kind of concerned that this wouldn't be stout enough. This is version two of the second part, and then I added these stiffeners here just because, man, it's a lot of money. And if uh, if that sucker dropped, it could land on something sharp and poke a hole in a battery. And ooh, we don't want to go there. So, and then underneath of this battery, I've got three little ribs on a cross brake on a cross member that I installed between the frame rails and the way I did those little ribs again like I did with the motor mounts is you start out with a piece of cardboard or a piece of um, this is file manila folder stock but whatever it doesn't matter cereal box and you kind of draw out a rough shape what you think it'll look like um, you put the empty put the empty battery box in there and you put this underneath of it and you kind of hold it in place. Is that the right angle? Maybe, maybe not. And then uh, you make the thing out of something harder, although not as thick as your final product. And that way you get some rigidity and you can hold it. So you can see that uh, the original shape, I kept the back the same and the, the front taper the same. But this here, I ended up cutting down a little bit because I wanted the battery box to tilt back and down a little bit. I wanted to tilt down. 
Uh, it's probably a trivial amount, but I wanted it to be lower in the chassis. One thing I don't care for about this battery box is it is high. It's tall. Um, you know, and that's going to mess with the center of gravity and the handling, especially being up in front. Uh, I don't know. But what can you do? I can't do anything about it. That's where it's going to have to go. Um, I guess I could have reconfigured the batteries a little bit. Uh, maybe slung maybe like one underneath of this pack of eight. So I could have nine in front, or maybe it could have even fit two down there. But then the wiring would have got all complicated. The box itself would have been a nightmare and loading the box with the batteries, et cetera, et cetera. So I didn't do that. <laughs> I've got the eight. And they're just going to sit up on top of the frame rails. And that's where they sit. I, I tilted it back a little bit. As much for aesthetics uh, as anything, I think it looks kind of cool. I'll tilt it back like that. I don't know if it's going to be an issue during acceleration. If having it already tilted back like that, it'll just make it want to do it more. Um, up in front, uh, we're, I'll, we'll crawl down there here in a minute and I'll show you these ribs, but you can't really see it. Uh, maybe you can at the corner. I don't know. Uh, but what the front of the rib sort of sticks out. I'm going to take some eighth inch plate and have it come up about an inch and it'll go in front of that bottom rail on the battery box. And then I'll just uh, have some some bolts that are already holding that front panel, this front panel here on anyway. And I'll just have those sort of do dual function. That eighth inch steel will be welded across all three of those ribs on the bottom. And then it'll bolt into the bottom rail of the battery box. And then I may, I may reuse the uh, existing holes that were for the radiator, uh, the radiator mount, which I, will not be able to use the existing, the old radiator. It just isn't going to fit. There's not enough room. So I may reuse these bolts and come up with some sort of a bracket that goes down and then ties into the sides here, drill and tap some holes. There'll be a plate on the sides here that's welded. It won't be welded on the top because obviously I have to take this, this piece out, take this piece off to get the batteries in, but it'll be welded along the sides here. So I could just take and drill and tap into this one inch, uh, one inch tube and, um, you know, put like three or four quarter 20 or even three eighths, maybe, um, five sixteenths, who knows. And just, just for a little bit of added support in the front, just to keep this thing possibly from, you know, like racking. I don't think it will certainly not with all these, all that plastic sort of sandwiched in together, but anywho, um, another thing that I did up here, you may not be able to see it and I'll, I'll cover this more in detail later. Uh, you can't see it, so I'm not even going to bother. So let's go underneath and see what it looks like. And I hope that I don't hit a button and shut this thing off early. That would be annoying. Oh, man. Okay, so here we are underneath. And there is... Let's grab this here. There is a cross member that I added. That is right there. It didn't used to be there. Um, in fact, the only, there's only two cross members on this entire frame. There's a sort of a tubular one up in front where the bumper bolts to the frame. And then there's just a, a sort of square section, rectangular section tube in the back where the rear bumper bolts on. So, uh, the rigidity of the chat of the, the body tub is really the only thing that keeps this frame from twisting. I think that I'm kind of alarmed by that, but. Uh, maybe it's by design, and me adding another stiffener in there is just going to make things worse and break and crack. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. So, anyway, that's those three rails. There's one, two, and three. And then on the back, oh yeah, the other reason I sort of tipped the battery back is because these existing engine mounts, they're sort of tilted back. Because, of course, the whole engine and transmission transfer case was tilted back a little bit. So... Those engine mounts are tilted, so if I have this, this piece is welded to the, at the moment it's just tacked, but this piece will be welded to the bottom of the battery box, and uh, it'll rest flat on these engine mounts, and then I'll just, uh, I think I'm going to end up making nut plates, nut plates that'll go into the sides of these, of these tube, of this rectangle tube, so the little nut plates will have two, probably three-eighths at least, bolts maybe I may even go half inch if it'll fit um probably three eighths two three eighths on each side just to hold the back down and then you know however many four or five uh, bolts going through that eighth 
inch steel plate on the front to hold the front bottom down and then I probably will add some supports to the front of the battery box to hold on to the radiator mount, the radiator support. And so that's what I did down here. So that's kind of fun. And you can see there's just kind of like tons of room in here where I told you I can't put that radiator in the front anymore. But, man, I could mount one back here. I could mount one sort of up underneath in the front here, sort of tilt it back at a 45 degree angle. It would clear all the suspension probably. It would get into some airflow. I could mount it back here, uh, lay it down flat horizontally or have it at an angle, uh, you know, anything really. Probably not horizontal because then mud could get up there and mud would get up there and it would get stuck and that's no good. So we'll do that. And then that's about all I got really down here. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about, you can't, you may not be able to see it very good, is up there on the steering shaft, you see it on the other side of these wires, anyway, there's a, a little wheel, it's a little micro switch, and that little micro switch uh, is activated by the steering shaft, the steering shaft has two flats on it, and then two rounds, so the micro switch, uh, whenever the steering wheel is turned, anything other than um, horizontal, then that micro switch will close and will send power to the power steering pump uh, through a delay relay. And I'm also going to have a, mm, a speed sensitive switch, um, probably with a little inductive pickup on the output shaft of the, of the, of the drive unit. And then that speed shaft sensitive, I'll have it set so that at say 10 miles an hour, the switch opens and turns the power steering pump off. And then that delay, uh, if I'm below 10 miles an hour, that delay will allow the power steering pump to run. But if I'm stuck, stuck in traffic at a light or something, I don't want it sitting there running for 10 minutes. So it'll shut the pump off at, um, say, 8 seconds or 10 seconds, whatever I end up thinking is appropriate. So so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's about all we got for today. But I just wanted to do another do another update video because I think this is pretty neat. I don't ever want to have to do this again. I'm going to take this out. I'll probably leave it in there just for a little while because I like to look at it. But I'll take this out and then that'll be uh, the last time that I take this out with batteries in it. Uh, uh, the next time that this goes in with batteries, it'll be finished. There'll be a plexiglass cover on the top here so that you can see the batteries. Um, I've got some battery straps. They come across and they kind of go at little diagonals. This will be my most uh, negative, positive. Oh, dang it. I should know that. Anyway, this will be my most negative terminal, let's say. And then uh, the, the charge, the current will flow through the batteries and then there'll be, uh, you know, the battery cables will come out probably to some terminals, some little single point terminals for the positive and one for the negative. And I'll probably have the positive on one side and the negative on one side just to keep uh, any possibility of those two from touching each other when I've got this thing lifted up in the air, setting it down in here. Um, and I will have those taped and covered and just to keep them from touching the frame. Because there's a lot of voltage going on here, about 200 volts and a lot of amperage. It would make a big, big spark. And then on the back side is all the coolant lines. Uh, I have all that plumbed up. And I'm going to have two sort of AN pass-through joints, lines, mm, fittings on the bottom of the battery box and then uh, the coolant lines running along through the frame and however I run those things will just get connected there. And if I ever do have to take this thing out again, that's where I'll disconnect those. Now the biggest problem I'm going to have for wiring, and it's going to be a nightmare and I don't exactly know how I'm going to do it <laughs> at all, uh, well, I might have an idea. Anyway, is uh, <laughs> wiring up all these little BMS uh, boards. So every single one of these little, every single one of these little slots right here has a multi-pin connector with I don't know how many pins, six, like eleven. Each one of them has eleven, and then all eleven of those will be populated, and then uh, times you know eight, so eighty-eight 
little bitty 22 gauge wires are going to come out of that for the battery management system and the thermistors uh, and then come through I guess it's going to have to be the front removable panel because it's the only way I'll be able to get to it to click them all in um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know how I'm going to do that yet. I may end up having to take the air, condi air conditioner uh, condenser out so I can reach all that stuff from the front through the radiator. I don't know. Uh, pff, we'll figure out that later. Uh, Jack Rickard, Rickard used to say that uh, making an electric car, doing an electric car conversion is nothing more than a series of problem-solving exercises. That's uh, one of the problems I'll have, but it's not insurmountable. I'll figure it out one way or the other. Um, let's see. I believe that's all I've got for you this time. Oh, you just kind of see back there how, uh, how nice and, how nice and tight that fits. That's a really, really good fit. The cool thing is if that charger ever fails on me, I'll be able to remove it from the bottom. I'll have coolant lines come out of the bottom of it. And then all I have to do is just undo those top four silver bolts, uh, undo the bottom charger mounts and just drop the thing out, you know, from the, from the bottom so that's pretty cool i don't have to take that battery box out um i'd like to say i planned it that way and it was on purpose so uh you know <laughs> i didn't anyway so thanks for watching again i didn't hit the stop button early so i can do a proper send off i uh, appreciate you watching make sure and hit that like and subscribe tell your friends tell your jeep buddies what i'm up to um closer and closer this comes the more excited i am i'm really uh really looking forward to having this done and getting on the road and seeing what I can break. So until next time, thanks for watching.